today we will talk about liquid chromatography mass spectrometry or lc msms ms is based on production of ions which are subsequently separated according to their m by z ratio the resulting mass spectrum provides a plot of relative abundance of generated ions as a function of m by z ms provides most versatile platform and comprehensive analytical technique for the proteomic scientist for wide variety of applications so in today's lecture i'll first give you an overview of the mass spectrometry workflow we'll then talk about individual components in some more detail such as liquid chromatography ionization sources so after doing the angel digestion now let's move on to second part the separation technology liquid chromatography or lc so chromatography in general is a physical separation method in which components for separation are selectively distributed in two immiscible phases a mobile phase flowing through the stationary phase now depending upon the mobile phase the technique is termed as either liquid chromatography or gas chromatography etc so what is liquid chromatography the peptide mixtures can be fractionated in line with the instrument prior to the introduction into mass spectrometer that's i think one of the advantage for doing the proteomic applications so in lc it can separate mixtures or components on the basis of differences in the affinity for stationary and mobile phase liquid chromatography is also useful for removing the undesirable impurities it also increases reproducibility in the samples as well as robustness of the ms measurement lc along with uh, further enrichment can help into the concentration of the diluted samples it also helps in increase sensitivity detection of low level proteins and further it can separate peptide mixtures so there are various type of chromatography one can use for different applications in proteomics the most commonly used method for the peptide fractionation is reverse phased liquid chromatography or rplc which separates peptides based upon the hydrophobic binding of interaction between the peptides or proteins in the mobile phase and immobilized hydrophobic ligands in the stationary phase by utilizing this hydrophobicity one can separate the peptides however if your proteo mixture or the peptides are very complex then can one can further use another type of chromatography method such as a strong cation exchange as well as different type of multi dimension separation can be employed in this slide i have shown you the configuration for reverse phase hplc as you can see the two components in the mobile phase a and b linked with the hplc pump a buffer can provide between the range of 0.1% of formic acid to 5% of acetonitrile and in b 0.1% to 80% of acetonitrile so first of all equilibrate the system in buffer a then load the peptides and wash those then run the gradient of increasing mobile phase b now wash the reverse phase with buffer b and then reequilibrate in a in this way the peptides can be separated and prior to ms analysis it can be desalted so that 
there is no interference of salt. Now, reverse phase is most commonly employed with the electrospray ionization because of its compatibility of reverse phased acidic aqueous and polar mobile with electrospray ionization. As I mentioned, in the proteomics, one can use ESI and liquid chromatography in line. So, directly samples can be prefractionated and further analyzed using mass spec. The inline reverse phase HPLC is very useful because it can do the desalting of peptides prior to ionization in ESI. There is no need for doing separate offline desalting and prefractionation. It can focus peptides from the dilute samples into the narrow chromatographic bands and it also enhances the sensitivity. Let us now talk about another separation technique which is also commonly employed in proteomics which is the strong cation exchange or SCX. So, in SCX resin the silica based cation exchange used in the stationary phase. The sulfonic acid cation based exchange ligands are used. These ligands are covalently bound to the polymeric coated silica. Now, as I have shown in the slide, the two important phenomena here one is retention, other is elution. In retention, that is based on the electrostatic attraction between the negatively charged sulfonic acid and positively charged peptides. The elution can be performed by an exchange of peptides for cation of mobile phase additive, the ammonium ions, and this is a reaction to the high concentration of cations. Now, HPLC can be microcapillary, it can be nano LC, or it can also be different type of chip based chromatography separation. Now, for proteomics, various type of microcapillary, nano LC and different type of chip technologies are currently used. In the microcapillary HPLC, the low flow rate which is less than 1 microliter per minute is more sensitive as compared to the standard reverse phased HPLC which is around 50 microliters per minute. The microcapillary HPLC is required for the analysis of low femtomole amount of the peptides. One can prepare the microcapillary HPLCs by using few silica capillaries and then pack that with the reverse phased packing material. For prefractionation, multi dimension separations are used. The different type of principles are involved for separating these peptides one can use size exclusion chromatography which separates based on the molecular weight or the size, ion exchange chromatography based on the charge, capillary electrophoresis based on charge, reverse phased based on the hydrophobicity, affinity chromatography which is based on the biological interactions. Now, multidimensional approaches can be coupled with the mass spectrometry. So, one can use various type of liquid chromatography methods in tandem and then do the multi dimension separation. Different type of approaches have been tried. For example, size exclusion chromatography followed by reverse phase chromatography, but it has resulted into the poor resolution of peptides in size exclusion chromatography. So, that is not very widely used. Other approaches include reverse phase chromatography followed by the capillary electrophoresis or size exclusion chromatography followed by the capillary electrophoresis. Due to the limited loading capacity and low loading volume of the capillary electrophoresis, again it is not very popular. 
the affinity chromatography based separations such as IMAC or Avidin followed by the reverse phased chromatography those are commonly used and a strong cation exchange followed by the reverse phased is most commonly used. So, this slide gives you an overview of various type of methods liquid chromatography separation which can be employed prior to injection into the ionization source. As I mentioned the strong cation exchange as well as reverse phase chromatography together can be employed for various proteomic application which have been demonstrated in the multidimensional protein identification technology or mud pit. In this technique the strong cation exchange separates by the charge which provides low resolution fractionation in the beginning and then reverse phase C 18 column which separates peptide based on the hydrophobicity and it provides high resolution gradient. Let me describe some of the concepts involved in the liquid chromatography in following animation. I will also discuss mud pit and some of the chip based approaches which are integrated for proteomic application with the liquid chromatography. So, let us discuss these concepts in following animation. A typical liquid chromatography setup consists of solvent bottles, degasifier, dual or quaternary pumps, sample injector, column and detectors. Here you can see the various components which are involved in performing the liquid chromatography. Different solvents can be placed in the solvent bottles depending upon the purification requirements. The solvents are mixed in the desired ratio and pumped into the column during elution after removal of any trapped air inside by means of the degasifier. The sample injector system may be automatic or manual. The automatic sample uses a syringe to inject the sample which is placed in a vial directly into the column. Once the sample is injected, mobile phase flows into the column through the pump. The column consists of a stationary matrix that preferentially binds certain analytes. The outlet from the column enters the flow cell where it can be detected. There are various stationary phase matrices are available that separate the components of the mixture based on different principles. One of the most commonly used matrices include the strong cation exchanger or SCX which separates charged peptides based on their electrostatic interactions with negatively charged sulfonic acid groups on the resin surface. Now, elution can be caused by the addition of positively charged mobile phase. The reverse phase chromatography is another commonly used tool which uses a hydrophobic matrix consisting of long aliphatic carbon chains. These resin analytes separate on the basis of hydrophobic interactions and can be eluted by changing the polarity of the solvent. The nano liquid chromatography which makes use of C 18 capillary columns has gained popularity for the proteomic studies due to their ability to achieve finer separations. Now, these separated components pass from the column 
outlet into the flow cell which is present in the detector. The most commonly used detector for protein analysis is UV detector which analyzes the protein absorbance at 280 nanometer and plots a graph of retention time against intensity. Multidimensional protein identification technology or MUDPIT is a widely adopted strategy that carries out two consecutive protein separations based on different principles as shown in the animation here. Shown on either side is a protein with different properties. Earlier we have talked about how one can make use of different properties of a strong cation exchange and reverse phase chromatography to separate out peptides. Now, use those basic concepts and drag and drop the proteins that will interact with the SCX and RP regions of the columns respectively. So, your answer is correct. You can use the protein properties and separate those in the multidimensional protein identification technology. MUDPIT is a non-gel technique to separate and identify individual components of complex proteins and peptide mixtures of a proteome. It has been shown that MUDPIT has potential to be used as a substitute of traditional two dimensional gel electrophoresis, since it can separate peptides in the 2D liquid chromatography. MUDPIT technique allows greater separation of peptides which can directly be interfaced with mass spectrometry ionization source. It also avoids band broadening which is one of the drawbacks of many chromatographic method. So, ESI it requires sample of interest to be in solution and that is why we mentioned that we can use the inline separation along with the liquid chromatography. To ionize the samples high voltage is applied to high conductively coated needle. So, this voltage results into the sample becoming charged either positive or negative. The positive ions are primarily used for the analysis of proteins. The distinguishing features of electrospray ionization includes its ability to produce multiple charged ions. The number of charges that can be accepted by a particular molecule depends on its basicity and its size. Now, here you can get an overview of the process involved in the electrospray ionization. The small droplet of solutions are generated by the Taylor cone which contains the peptide analyte. Protons from the acidic solution provides droplets the positive charge, so that it can move from the needle to the negatively charged instrument. In ESI, the desolvation of ions occur at the atmospheric pressure and mass analyzer is maintained at a lower pressure, so that ions can be drawn into the MS based on the pressure differential. During movement, the evaporation reduces the size of droplets and then it splits into the small charged droplets. Ions when enter inside the mass spectrometer, the droplets are dried using a vacuum of the inert gas which results into a gas phase ion acceleration through analyzer towards the detector. You can see this process in much with much clarity here in this slide. The top panel is showing the Taylor cone generation and the center it is shown that production of multiple charged ions. 
usually it is coupled to the MS via real time liquid separation. So, you can see in the slide in the MS experiment workflow, there are multiple steps are involved. I have numbered those from 1 to 5. So, protein samples are digested using trypsin and peptide mixtures are fractionated by using liquid chromatography or LC. These fractions are subjected to an electrical potential which results into a spray formation. In ESI or electro spray ionization, it leads to desolvation and ionization of peptides. The mass to charge ratio are measured in mass analyzer which is shown in step 4. The specific coins are randomly selected in the collision cell and then based on the collision induced dissociation, the resulting fragments ion are further measured in the second mass analyzer. The MS precursor ion intensity can be used for peptide quantification and MS MS ion fragmentation can be used for the sequence information and protein identification. So, in this workflow all these steps are equally important starting from the first step the triptych digestion, second prefractionation strategies using liquid chromatography, then ionization sources, mass analyzer and then spectrum generation MS or MSMS. -MS. We have discussed different type of liquid chromatography systems. In a traditional nano flow LCMS system, there are several fittings and connections are required, which is one of the major limitation of using those traditional systems. There are certain commercial advancements available to improve these type of limitations. Agilent's HPLC chip technology is a microfluidic device which carries out nano flow high performance liquid chromatography and reduces limitations of several fittings and connections. The microfluidic device contains circuits of tiny closed channels and wells which are etched onto a glass or plastic microchip. Different forces such as pressure or electrokinetic can push a small volume of fluids in a defined manner. This technology integrates functional components onto a reusable biocompatible chip which integrates sample enrichment and analytical nano columns, nano spray emitter, fittings and connection capillaries on a reusable biocompatible polymer chip. The chip based technology reduces the possibility of leaks and dead volumes. It improves sensitivity and reliability during the liquid chromatography steps. By making the integrated system, it avoids several pitfalls which are associated with separate tubings and fittings. Another important component of this technology is the HPLC chip MS interface. A chip is inserted into the interface which mounts on a mass spectrometer. So, this design configuration ensures that the electro spray chip is in the optimal position for mass analysis when the chip is inserted in the mass spectrometer. So, compared to the conventional nano spray techniques, this technology can achieve maximum sensitivity with minimum sample size by integrating sample preparation, separation and electro spray chip on the single chip technology.